Hi, everybody. My name is uh, Martin Loppers. I'm Chief Tent Watcher of Supply Chain Media. You also might know me as uh, Editor in Chief of Supply Chain Movement, European Quarterly, and also a website and you use the LinkedIn uh, group. Uh, welcome, everybody, uh, for joining us. Uh, we have a, a great hour of uh, supply chain knowledge to share, and uh, we have uh, three experts here in the audience as panelists. So um, you will see uh, to the left, that's me. That's uh, me, Martin Loffers. I'm a chief fan watcher. And I have three experts for the coming hour. Uh, and we will have an interesting uh, discussion. Um, this presentation uh, will be recorded. Um, later on, we will uh, uh, put it on YouTube. And also, um, you are all on mute as an audience. But you know, feel free to uh, ask questions. You will. Uh, find a questions panel, a question pane on the right side, so you can type in the questions. Um, so feel free uh, to uh, ask the question during our conversation. Uh, we'll, we will have a Q&A at the end, but we want to make it uh, as interactive as possible. So we, we, we have a discussion among each other, but also, you know, feel free to ask all the questions you want. So again, uh, welcome everybody for, for joining uh, this uh, webinar. And I have three experts uh, very knowledgeable experts uh, from both the vendor side, the retail and the manufacturing side. So that's a quite uh, interesting uh, uh, panel, I would say. Uh, first, uh, Frank, uh, welcome. Hello, Martin. Hello, everybody. So please, uh, yeah, explain uh, who you are and uh, give me a, a, bit, a bit of a background to uh, what your responsibility is uh, and what you're doing in the supply chain. Hello, Sean. Yes. Okay, uh, a few words about me and about uh, Auchan. Um, I am in charge of Operation IT and Logistics for Auchan in Romania. Um, me personally, I was involved since 10 years in development of logistics, supply and IT solution for Auchan in Romania. Um, previously, I spent 10 years for Auchan in Russia for logistic development of uh, our network uh, across uh, Russian country. Uh, Auchan is a French leading retailer uh, implemented in different countries across Europe, Africa, and Asia. We are developing different client solutions around convenience store, hypermarkets, supermarkets, and digital solutions, offering different brands, dry, fresh, and ultra fresh food, and offering a lot of reliable solutions in non food. Um, we have also a strong experience in seasonal products. Our proposals are based on many international flow and all of this creating uh, different uh, supply chain challenges. Recently in Romania, we developed a partnership with a petrol station company to provide a uh, 400 convenience store in petrol station. It's also a part of our challenge in supply chain and IT uh, development to reach um, performance. This is in two words, Auchan in Romania and myself. Okay, uh, thanks, uh, Frank. Uh, we will get back to the e-commerce challenges and all uh, things happening uh, at your side. Uh, let's start, Sebastian, uh, welcome. Uh, could you explain something about your background? Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. So I'm uh, Sebastian Morion, business unit manager in uh, Tesis Square. So Tesis Square is an international software vendor company focused in supply chain and transportation. So in this company, I'm uh, focusing on some uh, key international accounts and uh, some uh, Italian accounts in order to follow them on uh, all the, uh, the transport and uh, supply chain uh, matters. Okay. So the mission of, uh, of Tesis Square is mainly to, to connect people, to connect the, the different actors of the supply chain. And we do it through a digital ecosystem, putting to, uh, together technology and process in a collaboration square. Okay. So we are present in four branches, one in Netherlands, one in France, one in Spain, and one in uh, Germany. Okay. And through our customer, we are present in uh, 44 countries. So Tesis Square, same if it's uh, an Italian company, is now uh, an international company uh, leading with uh, with most of the most important customers in the world, and Auchan and Ayer are, are probably. Okay, uh, thanks. So uh, Tasty Square is a software vendor, but you are um, providing only cloud solutions and made it possible to get uh, more visibility across companies. Exactly. Right. So our mission is uh, is uh, this one is to put uh, in a, in a unique uh, digital uh, platform. 
uh, all the actors of the, uh, the supply chain and the transportation in order to make more collaborative all the processes and to uh, to give a digital uh, uh, capabilities to all of our customers. Okay. Yeah, we will uh, get uh, to uh, the topic of end-to-end uh, -to -end supply chain visibility later on in depth because uh, yeah. there's a lot, a lot of things happening, uh, especially in the COVID-19 uh, area. Um, Sydney, um, let's move on to you. Could you explain a bit by yourself? I have a few slides, but uh, Sydney, welcome and explain something about your background and higher. Okay, hello everybody. Well, I have, a, a, let me say, a significant experience in supply chain through uh, automotive and white goods industries. Uh, now I'm uh, heading uh, the, the logistic of uh, Higher Europe. Higher is a, a group of, uh, uh, a leading group in white uh, goods industry who acquired the Candy Group uh, uh, one year ago. Here you can see some numbers regarding uh, higher Europe. Uh, we are seven percent market share in uh, in the um, in the sector, number five in the ranking. Uh, here you can see our European uh, uh, network. Uh, but the most important uh, to have a look on the right side, where we have China, that is one of our most important sources. Uh, uh, as you can also see here, our network is, uh, every factory is specialized by a product line. So our network is uh, a full integrated network between uh, sources and markets. And uh, these require a strong effort uh, of bringing the information uh, uh, and make them visible across uh, the supply chain. Yeah, this is uh, telling a bit more regarding our strategy where we wish to move from uh, just selling appliances to sell uh, services through uh, a solution that we call ecosystem and is uh, supported uh, basically by the new IIT technology. But again, this is just to reinforce the concept that the flow of information and the connection between all the actors in the supply chain is really a key topic for us. But, you know, I guess you're not there yet. So uh, in an ideal world, you have uh, connected uh, well, dishwashers uh, and freezers. Well, uh, as Candy, we are leading the European market of uh, IoT and we have a full range of connected appliances. But it is not just to connect the appliances. The concept is to bring uh, adding value to the user through mm -hmm. uh, new experiences and new services that we can bring uh, together with the appliance. Just to make you an example, uh, Hire is a, a, a market leader at a worldwide level on uh, uh, the wine coolers. Uh, we have a service in which we can sell the wine coolers, but we can also sell the service to keep the wine cooler always uh, uh, well supplied with the, 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 the preferred wines. So we put together the product and the service. And we believe strongly in this, that is uh, in our concept, of the, the future of uh, our industry. I, I was wondering, Frank, you are in a retail at Auchan and you're selling wine. Uh, so you're also part of this ecosystem. Can you relate to this, this well, this vision or, and how uh, this uh, Auchan is positioned in this IoT world? Uh, IoT, for the moment, we are, um, how to say, we see a lot of perspective with the IoT um, solution in order to better uh, follow track, understand and get the data that are essential to, to improve and to uh, make perform our supply chain. But we are really at the beginning uh, of uh, this subject um, and not, uh, not well advanced in this, in this, uh, in this uh, direction. I think it's quite new. We have done some surveys about that, but we'll get that later on. All right. Um, you know, for the discussion's sake, uh, I present you some, uh, uh, some findings of a research we did earlier this year. So we uh, did a survey among 142 manufacturing companies in Europe and some retailers, but mostly uh, manufacturing companies. So that was in March at the peak of uh, the, the COVID-19 crisis. And uh, what you can see here, so there were, the new thing was there were um, uh, increases and drops 
uh, of demand and supply at the same time. In the, in the past, with a tsunami, you had only uh, drops in supply, but now you see that, that uh, COVID-19 has hit uh, companies both on the demand side and on the supply side. And so some companies uh, experience, in, you know, uh, sudden drops, but also in the, the retail, uh, the huge increases. So it was a mixed bag. Um, so I was wondering, getting back to you, Frank, what, what did you experience in March during COVID-19? <laughs> it was um, uh, a very um, a challenging period, yes, because um, from the beginning of March, we, we felt a big, big increase of the activity in the food products, especially. Mm -hmm. um, we had big increments uh, of the sales on very um, very essential products, flour, pasta, yes, uh, which um, was the, the main focus for the client coming uh, coming uh, to our shop. And uh, it was a fluctuation, you know, it was exactly uh, what is teach as bull whip effect. effect. Mm -hmm. We grow, 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 and after down, uh, when the lockdown uh, started. And, um, and this is mainly what we experienced in March. Uh, to give an idea for retailer, an important period is December. December, it is the, the period where we sell everything, non-food, food, and the volume growing very high. And in March, we experienced nearly the same, the same period of activity as, as December. And for how long did you experience that? Well, we experienced this, this, this period from, uh, let's say, um, beginning of March, um and of first week second week of march till beginning of april and after uh the volume became a little um more um uh, stable uh all along the period of lockdown and were there certain products where you had a lack of supply so that the suppliers couldn't deliver uh, yes, for sure. In this in this in this context, uh, we face uh, some difficulties to to procure some some food products, as I said, like um, like flour, uh, like pasta, uh, and it was very difficult to to supply uh, this kind of product because uh, the synchronization was totally um, perturbated by uh, by the, the evolution of the, of the cells. Uh, and you know some products, uh, okay, it's not plug and play. You need time to produce them. Yes, for example, uh, to grow the to, to grow the um, the, um, the volume of yes, it's it's very important. It's 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 needing time to 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 be produced. And for some some kind of products like this, we 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 had some some shortages, quite quite long, uh, before to to come back to 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 the normality. And Frank, uh, uh, oh, sorry, Sydney, uh, what about higher? Because in the automotive, you saw a lot of automotive uh, manufacturers had to shut down because they, they didn't have any spare parts. Uh, how, how did it happen in, in your environment with the white goods? Well, we started suffering uh, a crisis in supply in January because we have a factories uh, in China, as you can imagine. Uh, so when the lockdown happened in China, we had this issue to be able to produce and to sell supply to Europe. At that stage, Europe seems to be uh, out of this, uh, of this, uh, very far from this issue, uh, as with the previous uh, uh, epidemic that didn't uh, uh, hurt Europe so much. But then, uh, as uh, as China overcame this, and after the end of February, basically, they started again with production uh, at full stream. Uh, we had the shock in Europe. So before a shock in them and supply and later on, uh, just after a shock in the demand, because with the lockdown, uh, most of our customer retailers, they were willing to postpone or cancel their deliveries. And at that stage, we had to slow down the supply that has been just accelerated in order to find a reasonable, uh, uh, let me say, a, a reasonable balance. Uh, two, three months later, June, July, the demand mm -hmm. went up again very rapidly. 
and let me say quite uh, in a stable way, uh, until now that we risk another shutdown uh, in Europe, another lo lockdown in Europe, uh, the demand is still very strong. So since uh, June, July, we had to face uh, this increase uh, of demand uh, in order to be able to supply what uh, was uh, needed. Uh, with several uh, uh, challenges behind uh, on the suppliers of uh, finished goods, on the suppliers of components, and uh, on the supply of uh, tier one and tier two level. So it has been very, very complicated to keep the machine uh, uh, fast and efficient. So, and uh, Sebastian, uh, you have oversight of a lot of your customers in all areas. What do you uh, experience on uh, demand supply among your uh, so, customers? Yeah, so so we have the chance to have a customer on uh, more or less all the, the main sector of uh, of business. So we we saw all the case. So starting from the one with a big crisis around the demand, like fashion business or automotive business, so the crisis was really high for them. Uh, going to uh, to an increase a, a great increase of the demand for retail uh, food retail, but also for all the healthcare products. Okay, also on this part, mainly in Italy. Uh, the healthcare category products had a, a, a big increase. Same if people remain in uh, in house, this this part of the uh, of uh, product categories uh, goes uh, very well. The the problem that we saw was uh, for the retail, for example, and uh, and the healthcare was on uh, supplies. So we saw that uh, during this period, based on the on the origin of the product, uh, the supply didn't follow the the demand. And uh, we get uh, a lot of problems uh, in, in Europe linked to that. So the most critical point was uh, uh, also the, the synchronization or more, the not synchronization between uh, the, uh, the different situation in the countries and also at uh, local point. What I mean, for example, when, when everything starts, uh, I start in China. And so all the supply from China has a big problem of, of deliveries. Okay. But mm -hmm. the demand in Europe was still good. And then after the crisis, uh, the, the supply start to, to go well, but the demand in Europe go down. And we also saw it at a, at a local level, for example. If you look to, uh, to, to Italy, for example, uh, we have some regions uh, which have a, a big lockdown. And so the demand go down, but the other region was not in the same case. So we, we had to face uh, a lot of uh, combination between the uh, the situation and based on the time during the crisis so starting from different situation at different time for the different uh, physical locations uh, frank you know you mentioned about e-commerce and that you are uh, also uh, are uh, in, a, in a joint endeavor with a, a, a gas station so what did you experience on the e-commerce side so far in the e-commerce, for sure, uh, with the lockdown, uh, we notice um, an important increase of um, of the volume uh, ordered through our solution. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, this crisis uh, was an accelerator, an accelerator of tendency. Uh, let's say um, after, before before the crisis, we had a business plan on uh, on e-commerce. After the crisis. Um, we have to. We are much more uh, uh, far from from our target. We 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 grow on this on this field in in a way quite uh, quite important because the demand of the client was to to have services uh, to be delivered at home to avoid contact outside, and then any solution on the market uh, available to 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 propose this kind of service was uh, was a good option for everybody and then it, it for sure um helped us to, to 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 grow faster on this on this on this kind of solution okay um let's move on um about uh, another survey uh, result you know from the same uh, survey uh, we did in march um we asked what are the main bottlenecks uh, and you see it here um you know you see uh, Inbound flows were uh, a bottleneck, uh, but basically two um, blocks you see it in red uh, were on uh, visibility, uh, visibility of the demand from customers and visibility uh, on the supply side. But of course, also inbound flow of raw materials, outbound transportation to customers, operators being sick, so that's a different one, orders being sick, 
and care team and protect the materials of employees and plans be sick and care. Basically, uh, two things we want to discuss. Um, uh, demand visibility from customers and lack of visibility from the, the capacity of suppliers. So, um, Sydney, from your side at higher, um, did you have enough visibility for your tier one and tier two suppliers if they were open, still producing, able to uh, deliver? Well, this chart is, uh, is very important. Uh, more than a lack of visibility, I would uh, underline the importance of uh, such a visibility mm -hmm. in, in a specific uh, uh, year as, uh, as the one that we are living in this, uh, today. Uh, we, we had the chance to map quite uh, easily the tier one and tier two. At least mm -hmm. uh, we did that uh, for the most critical one. Uh, and uh, let me say quite uh, quite rapidly we we got uh, a, a a picture of what was going on uh, where the risk was uh, hidden uh, how to manage it so uh, let me say we we reacted very well on on visibility on the supply chain uh, we also had uh, good information a good relash good connection with the customers uh, regarding the customer visibility but in that case there was uh, another uh, element that the, that was uh, pretty new uh, that was the law because every country every region uh, was depending by decisions uh, done by by politics so mm -hmm. the law was affecting uh, the capability of our customers to react or to give us uh, reliable information so uh, so some, some say were... the framework was yeah. there but uh, the decision maker was outside of the of the framework it was the politics and now uh, in, in the future could you uh, change the model where you could put also border closures shops closing down that kind of stuff could you, are you now also include that in your new model for for the future um, let me answer in this way uh, during the the hardest phase of the crisis uh, we could uh, uh, reinforce some connection with our customers mm -hmm. uh, we built uh, mm, a, a good uh, collaboration environment with some of them and we are sharing relevant information in order to react together to whatever is is uh, happening outside so i would say yes we changed the, the way to, to manage the relation and the visibility with the customer. We improved that in several cases. And um, we are still mapping what is going on region by region. Yeah. But uh, may I say one thing? Uh, differently from the past, now we are working more focused on the same target. Because to provide the goods to them uh, is uh, for our success and their success. And now this is more clear to everybody than in the past. I can imagine. Um, Sebastian, you know, uh, at Stacy Square, you are providing solutions uh, in a platform shape and also providing visibility. What did you experience on your side? And because all, uh, you know, although orders are going through your platforms, could you see something about what 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 was visible visible uh, in this area, uh, or what was your findings regarding visibility on an operational level so what we see on operational level that there is two two type of bottlenecks so the first one is on, on more material more personal point on transportation for example in mm -hmm. which we get a, a lack of uh, resources okay so uh, during the crisis having people uh, at home and so on we we get a lot of uh, lack of resources in terms of planner in terms of drivers and so on, so uh, both for primary and secondary uh, transportation. So we saw that there is a, a lack of, uh, of trans on, uh, on the transportation part. The other one is uh, a bottleneck on the information. Okay, mm -hmm. People staying at home and so on. We saw that the information that before uh, go very well from uh, suppliers to, uh, to distributors to customers uh, go in uh, with big difficulties because uh, the people were not present and so on. And so we saw that we get a lack of uh, communication between the different actors. So uh, working with our customer and following uh, what, what they ask us, we had to work a lot on uh, digitalization and uh, automatic, we'll say, communication between the different actors of the supply chain. 
in order to avoid that if i have to change uh, one guy because he's uh he's at home or he cannot come to work all the process uh remain working and all the information continue to uh, to go to each actor of the supply chain starting from uh, superior tier two tier one until to the to the final customers i can imagine you know you, your t square is um, delivering a whole portfolio of products from tms and visibility and support and so on um but i can imagine not all your customer customers are using the whole portfolio did you see uh a more quicker roll out of certain projects because they are in need of a uh, certain visibility so what we see it's uh, more um what they plan to do in uh, in few months uh, they they decided to make it in a much more shorter time so for sure we see customer uh pushing by the crisis uh, asking to go uh quicker and quicker on the on the rollout of our solution from one part and from the other one effectively we get from the uh, the different uh, customer prospect that we have uh, an higher request on the uh, end to end supply chain visibility, both on the real time one and on the, on the analysis uh, one. Okay, so uh, yes, uh, we for us it was a, a a huge period in which the our demand as an IT uh, provider uh, increased a lot during this uh, this period. And I was also wondering, you know, a lot of planners had to work from home. Um, um, did it uh, bring any problems or were they happy that they were working on a cloud uh, solution? So uh, first, I don't, it, we will see both of case. One uh, of some of our customers didn't have all the planning part uh, activated. So they had to, to ask to their provider to get in charge some part of the, the process in order to plan uh, the trip uh, in the place of the customer. So it's, no, it's never a good find, uh, a good thing to, uh, to, to give them this, uh, this case in the end uh, in order to, to plan everything, but some of our customers were obliged to do this kind of, of things because they didn't uh, digitalize and optimize uh, the transport. And on the, the other hand, we have some customers which has an automatic process of the planification. And so in this case, uh, they were much more uh, easiest to, to, to manage this, uh, this process and to be able to plan the activities uh, same if the planner uh, was not uh, available or working for mom uh, uh, accessing directly to the to our platform. Yeah, I, I can uh, imagine that for the future, you know, um, the uses of applications in the cloud will be more paramount and necessary to be more flexible, uh, working out of home, adding more applications and uh, connecting to other systems. That's what yeah. I think. But I think that the key point for cloud is not is not the fact that to, to be able to work for more or something like that. Uh, yes, it's a, it's a plus of the solution for sure. But the, mm -hmm. the really important point is to be able to connect all the actors yep. together. This is the point of the cloud that which will permit us to have a, a, a full view end to end of all the activities and so on. Then the, the people will work for more, will work in, a, in the office and so on. But I'm not sure it's the key point. The key point is to have all the information in unique point that all the actors share this uh, unique vision of the supply chain and they are uh, all uh, able to work uh, together to, uh, to, to increase this supply chain and to, uh, to make it possible. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Um, Frank, uh, on your side, what, what do you see uh, when you look at these slides? What were the bottom marks uh, on your side at uh, Auchan? Uh, it reminds me something <laughs> because the bottlenecks uh, that you that are mentioned um some of the ones that that we we clearly uh, faced during uh, this period uh when we speak about uh, the bottleneck uh, concerning the inbound it is uh, one of the most critical aspects that we had to manage because uh on one side um there was the, the, the increment the dramatic increase of volume and mm -hmm. on the other side um we experienced some 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 problematic with with people on sick list quarantine at a certain stage of our activity in March, uh, and especially in the area of inbound. And um, we discover at which level we are, um, we have to, 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 to develop some, some solution around the, um, the facilitation of the flow of uh, inbound uh, inside of the world. Um, and this is this is one of uh, one of the aspects that that we we, we really uh, were able to 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 experience. In another hand, um, 
it was a crisis quite uh, okay. We we saw the crisis that the crisis is rising, um, mm -hmm. and in another hand, it it was quite quite fast in terms of uh, of uh, development of activity, and we also noticed some some aspect of responsiveness and and let's say to to imagine some alternative scenario to the standard scenario in order to uh, to be able to to overlap the the, the the volume and the activity that 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 we were um, we were having at at this time after in another hand i would say that uh, concerning the organization for sure uh, the work from home and the way we were able to manage the work from home with uh, some tools of communication well adapted for that uh, help us to to continue to work and to continue to uh, to perform the activity during this period with few troubles and uh, this was uh, an important uh, an important uh, part of um, of uh, of the way to to overpass this this period i was wondering you know in the retail there's a, a huge dependency it used to be a huge dependency on edi communications i can imagine that in in, in a crisis people are calling are mailing uh, all kind of different kind of communication uh, channels are being used do you see things uh, accelerating from EDI to a more hybrid way? Or how do you see it uh, in your side, Frank? Uh, from my side, I see that the, um, the EDI development in all aspects linked with administrative treatment, ordering, invoicing, and so on are moving quite fast. Um, at this stage, um, for sure, um, the EDI, EDI message for uh, the treatment of physical flow of goods at the inbound, uh, in particular, are still so not, not so developed. And um, uh, from for, for for our activity, it's 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 important to notice that uh, this field, okay, is a field of interest uh, for sure for for industrial and for industry in general. But uh, I see a lot of um, perspective uh, concerning this this technology in order to smooth and to accelerate the, the, the physical flow of the goods through the logistic and the, the, the platform of treatment of the products. Okay. And for us, it is, a, it is one of the consequences, in fact, it is one of the aspects that we, we study after this, the, 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 the facing of the bottleneck. We said, what we could do next time? And uh, and for sure, EDI uh, development for Inboot was uh, and it is uh, a main subject on which we are working locally. Okay, you know, uh, mentioning EDI, I clicked uh, already through the next slide because uh, I'm showing uh, the hype cycle for supply chain strategy uh, that's from Gartner. From this is the one July 2019. Uh, I don't know if they already uh, uh, produced an update for this year. Maybe not, uh, considering the COVID-19. What I saw in the last uh, six months that um, COVID-19 is kind of rocket fuel for all kind of uh, supply chain digitalization. So explain this uh, in briefly what this Gartner uh, hype cycle is all about from left to right. You see on the, on the left side, some new technology is starting up. For example, they uh, recognize natural language generation as a, as a new technology quite early. And then you'll see, uh, no, you get to the peak uh, you see new uh, um, uh, innovations getting to the, the peak uh, of the hype, I would say. Blockchain and supply chain was last year almost at the peak of uh, the hype. And after a hype, you see some disappointment because some uh, hypes are not coming through. Uh, you know, maybe some vendors are overselling. And then you get into uh, what they call the, 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 the trough of disillusionment. It's, it's a, you know... Uh, a valley uh, deep down and, and then next to it you get the slope of enlightenment finally the companies are understanding and uh, how to use uh, applications new technology and at the end you know to the right you get the plateau of productivity and then all this innovation has been accepted and uh, like you know like erp it's been around and people know how to work with it um getting back to the crisis COVID 19 so what I saw is that uh, a lot of projects has been accelerated. 
so uh, maybe it took years to to do to get something across and implement it, and all of a sudden within months, uh, a lot of things were happening and uh, accelerated. Um, Sebastian, from your side, what, what did you see at uh, from Tasty Square? How do you look at this uh, hype cycle? And how do you look at uh, the application of uh, supply chain technology from your side? From our side, so uh, we we are working on some consolidated technology trend, uh, and uh, and which were boosted by the, the pandemic was, uh, for example, the end-to-end -end visibility. So this is one of the key topic uh, mm -hmm. in which we are uh, we are fo focus on. Uh, uh, because of the situation and uh, because also of uh, the direction in which uh, we want to bring our product. Uh, the control tower also, which is linked to, to this end-to-end this -end, uh, visibility, so to be able to have in a new place uh, a global view of, uh, of all the supply chain, so uh, digitalizing uh, all the, 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 the point of the supply chain. Uh, the real-time uh, visibility also, because uh, as uh, the situation is no more uh, stable and uh, unknown because uh, it's all unknown situation that we are focused on. Uh, it's also important to be able to to give a real time visibility to our customer and to final customer uh, in order to to let them know uh, on the supply chain where where they are. At. The the last point in which we are focused it's uh, the IoT. So uh, we we have different uh, point of view that on uh, on fresh item for the supply chain. So uh, we are working on uh, the temperature control in uh, the full. Uh, supply chain process, so checking the temperature of uh, of the, the the camion and the the goods in the full supply chain, and also for a more specific on, for example, the year management part. So uh, the control of the warehouse, having uh, IoT in the different points of the warehouse in order to follow uh, the, the access of the camion and the, the trips. So these are uh, some consolidated uh, technology uh, in which we are uh, we are working. Then uh, we are working on some emerging one like uh, diagnostic analytics and risk management. So uh, the crisis uh, bring a, a biggest focus on the on the risk. So uh, how to identify or to manage uh, the the risk that we have on the supply chain, starting from uh, layer one, uh, going uh, back uh, to in the supply chain in order to to be able to understand uh, all the risk based on the uh, the countries based on the uh, pandemic situation, but also based on the political and crisis uh, situation of each uh, point of our supply chain. So both on the uh, inbound process and the onbound uh, process. And then there is some uh, some new topics in which we are uh, working. So it's not a priority, but we are working uh, on them. So it's uh, machine learning, uh, natural languages, also to, to work on the control chain and uh, and the blockchain, which is also a topic that, uh, that we are looking for. And uh, and I think that uh, Frank also could uh, could bring some example on uh, on blockchain in which we are working. When I look to this graph and, and I see, especially you know, you mentioned end-to-end uh, -end supply chain risk management. You know, I I hear a lot of companies who are really busy with that topic. So I think you know this topic will be out of this uh, trough of uh, disillusionment quite quickly. And I think it, I expect to be on the plateau of productivity uh, already. Or uh, next next year, and yeah. regarding machine learning and um, artificial intelligence, I know that uh, Unilever has uh, applied uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence within three months earlier this year. Uh, same with Merck. So I see a lot of acceleration of those uh, types of new innovations in supply chain. So I yeah. think that a lot of these dots will move to the right quite quickly. Don't you agree? Uh, exactly. Sebastian? Yeah, yeah, completely. As as we spoke before with uh, with Frank and Cine, uh, on the business side, uh, the things has to go quicker uh, because of the situation, because of the crisis and so on. And I think that on the IT part, we have the same case. Uh, the crisis uh, bring, up, bring, um, bring us to be more reactive, to be more quicker on uh, giving a solution to, uh, to our customer because they have to manage so many changes uh, in mm -hmm. their supply chain, in their process, in their process. And so it's our job to uh, to be able to uh, to to bring them to uh, to this new uh, new era and uh, and to give all the solution that they need to uh, increase and uh, and guarantee the, the, the business that uh, that they are doing. Uh, Sydney uh, at higher, uh, were there specific projects you have seen accelerated out of this chart, uh, moving from left to right, to where you think uh, have been uh, implemented more quickly than than before the crisis? 
Uh, well, no, the crisis didn't change our priorities in uh, uh, information technology projects because we were already onboarding uh, a solution for the supply chain management end-to-end, uh, mm -hmm. -end, uh, including uh, a big piece of uh, the, the supply chain visibility, uh, collaboration, supplier collaboration is in particular. Uh, on the other side, we have a big project on the IRP because due to the M&A, uh, we are now in, uh, in the process of changing the IRP. So uh, most of uh, the framework was already set. Uh, we are just uh, proceeding with the same, uh, hoping that our suppliers uh, won't get uh, crowded of a new demand and will not uh, divert the resources from our project. This is for Tesi. And, 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 and regarding end-to-end -end supply chain risk management, the assessment and the financial evaluation of risk, has that changed? Uh, we, uh, we, oh, sorry. Uh, we sorry, did no. an assessment on this. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, actually, um, let me say the risk, the map of the risk is quite clear to us. Uh, it is also quite clear uh, uh, the cost and the pure opportunities to cover these risks. So we won't invest uh, in a specific way in this field in the next uh, few years. And Frank, uh, what about you? What, 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 has there been uh, an acceleration at Auchan uh, in the, these uh, kind of topics and uh, projects? From our side, um, as I say, our, our main topics is to smooth and to, to have some responsiveness, which is higher than than today in our uh, supply chain process. And um, for us, um, the supply chain visibility and analytics are, are quite important aspects um, in order to, to, to develop um, this, uh, this principle. And how we proceed, um, but first of all, uh, we implement core model solution for any actor on the, on the chain and uh, we try to be in capacity to, to provide uh, good tools with the data collection in order to, to be uh, well aware about all our um, uh, activity uh, all along the, the value chain and the product journey and after to be, to be in capacity to, to really uh, use uh, and uh, uh, take advantage of, uh, of information that, that, that we get for analytics or for uh, visibility and predictability of, uh, of the activity for, uh, for the actor. Um, there are also some aspects which, which are linked with um, some, some solution to, 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 smooth, to smooth the activity inside the logistic platform. Mm -hmm. uh, mechanization is a, is a part of, uh, of the problematic. Uh, uh, once again, to, to, to smooth, to reduce the bottleneck, to, to make uh, more fluid uh, any transit of product from, from, from supplier to, to any point of sales in our network. And uh, that's uh, some of the aspects uh, on which we, we, are, uh, we are involved. There is also a question of blockchain, but I think it's more linked with uh, the products and, and the capacity to to, to provide at this stage, you know, for, for, for the moment, uh, for sure, it's to, to provide some, some information on, uh, on the products and uh, to be able to, to secure uh, the, the product uh, perspective for, for the client. Yes. Um, this is mainly the, the main subject that, that, that we have in our hand at the moment. Okay. Um, we, we did a survey in June, uh, among 106 manufacturing companies and some retailers, uh, so that's uh, after the, 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 the main peak of COVID-19, beginning of this year. And what you see here, you know, we ask um, the, the investment plans in uh, software solutions, supply chain solutions, and um, as an OP, you know, all the last five years, sales and operations planning, or maybe called integrated business planning, uh, was number one uh, still. Um, so it's still number one, uh, and end-to-end -end supply chain visibility was new now uh, coming up. So what you see in red that end-to-end uh, -end supply chain visibility is really in demand, and we made a distinction between overall uh, respondents and uh, the companies who are leading. So if you have uh, like the Gartner 
supply chain maturity level from one to five. We asked also what is the maturity level, what's the level, and we said the leaders are four or five. So what you see in the orange bars that um, the leading companies uh, are investing uh, a lot, mostly in end-to-end -end supply chain visibility in the next 12 months, and S&P uh, a bit less. But they're also uh, investing more in prescriptive analytics, uh, also especially in supply chain network design, tooling what they call uh, a, a digital twin, so creating a, a, a model of the whole ecosystem, not only their own warehouses and, and factories, but also including the major suppliers and their factories and warehouses, and possibly also uh, from uh, the customer side, they did it to create a, a digital uh, twin or simulation of the ecosystem where they can drive scenarios and do risk assessments. And uh, real-time transport visibility, so not only uh, route planning usually done, but also taking into account the weather, uh, traffic uh, situation, traffic jams, uh, border closing, and you see a lot of investments in real-time transport visibility. Um, and also scheduling and supply chain risk management again, and it's probably related to supply chain network design. Um, uh, to you, um, Sebastian, you, you also mentioned uh, real-time transfer visibility, so uh, especially in the leading companies that's in demand. Do you see also a, a peak in demand from your customers and prospects uh, that they want real-time transfer visibility? Yes, on the on the on the retail mainly, uh, we we have this kind of uh, of request from our customer in order to be able to give more service to the to the to the point of sales and to the to the final delivery. So on this on this kind of uh, of markets, yes, we saw this uh, this increase of uh, of the demand. Uh, for the on the as a Tesi Square uh, roadmap, we will say that uh, I will give you a couple of examples in which we are we are investing. Uh, the first one is uh, is for sure the end-to-end uh, -end, uh, supply chain visibility. So mm -hmm. for us, it means to to create for our customer uh, a digital e ecosystem. So it means to be focused on the information, uh, to to manage uh, the control of this information all along the, the full supply chain, starting from the structured uh, ADI uh, file communication to the mobile connection in order to to follow also the position of the of the deliveries and everything working for multi-channel communication uh, agility. Okay, so this is one of the first example. The second one is to work on the TMS. So uh, for us, TMS is not only uh, the, the planification of the of the transport. Uh, for us, it means to uh, to manage all the process around transportation. So it, mm -hmm. mean, it means to work on uh, on open in uh, ETMS, open to uh, to integration and collaboration with third parties. So with all the actors of the supply chain, open to integrate also new channels like e-commerce, uh, like other kind of, uh, of, uh, of business in order to, uh, to increase all the, the kind of, uh, of uh, delivery that we can manage and also integrate new delivery models. So basing on uh, e-commerce, but on, on not only uh, being able to manage all the kind of deliveries, including inbound and outbound processes uh, in uh, uh, ETMS. Um... Frank, you know, uh, you mentioned that uh, at Ocean you also uh, are uh, working on a collaboration with a, a gas station for e-commerce and that kind of uh, activities. Do you see new challenges and new requirements for, for systems to, to make it work in e-commerce and e-fulfillment? Frank? I am yeah sorry. Um, sorry. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Yes, I am with you. Um, yes, concerning concerning petrol station, it is um, the problematic of petrol station. It is small volume, uh, big quantity of point of sales, and uh, in this uh, in this field, uh, the capacity to 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 manage with high performance uh, all the parameters of of, of of the procurement of uh, operation in warehouse and of transport is crucial to 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 ensure um, uh, a reliable experience in the shop for for the for the customer and um, from this perspective we we we, we integrated our, our our solution in order to to to, to manage um, 
main aspect of, uh, of the value chain in, in supply chain. And, and I would say that it's conformed to our priority also transport. Transport management is one of the, of the aspects in this field. Um, but that it's crucial for us. 400, okay, when, when, when we deliver for markets, one thing, it's big truck, it's a few, a few point of delivery, few, it can be many, but um, it's uh, at a level quite, quite accessible. When we speak about petrol station, we speak about a lot of, lot of, of lot of point of, of, of delivery and, mm -hmm. and the capacity to, to, to manage them and to know um, uh, the situation of, uh, of the transport in real time and to, to planificate the thing well is, is an aspect quite, quite, quite essential. I can imagine that, you know, inventory management is getting more difficult when you talk about e-commerce, different kinds of stocks everywhere, different kinds of channels. You have to reserve stock for certain channels um, and you have to redirect because some, uh, some, some uh, channels are demanding more especially when e-commerce and certain goods are being in demand. So you see some new needs in inventory management to, uh, to manage it in a different kind of way? Uh, the, the, the inventory management is clear, uh, a key, uh, an important key of our, of our perspective, because as I say at, at the beginning, Ocean is, is a player in, 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 in big, in small, uh, in fresh, in dry, uh, in food, in non-food, um, in uh, physical and in digital uh, trade. Uh, and for sure, um, the way to, 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 to manage uh, ideally the position of the stock uh, to optimize the flow of products uh, to smooth uh, the whole activity uh, is an important factor. Um, it means that uh, for sure we we have some so, some perspective to to say where is the best place for for for, for the stock of product as near us as possible. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I can imagine so. Um, hello. Me... Yeah, hello. Uh, yes, I, I was sorry, I was interrupted, but as near us as possible of a client. It is a it is one of the of the main concern of inventory management. And offering um, the, 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 the most uh, the most uh, reliable uh, the most reliable um, experience for, for, for the supplier also to smooth the activity of the supplier and uh, to do in sort that the supplier is delivering on one point not on many points and um, uh, this is also an aspect of inventory management that that we consider. But, I, but, but, but when, yeah, I have inventory close to the customer. That's the ideal world. But uh, sometimes you have the wrong inventory at the wrong place, so you have to redirect it, or uh, you have a central station where you have to redirect the, the inventory when you don't know where the demand is coming from. So is that going to change in the inventory model, Frank? Yes, hello. After uh, yes, uh, the, the point to, to to have the inventory in the right place, um, it's mainly to say um, to have uh, the, the 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 high rotation as near as possible as the client, the low mm -hmm. rotation uh, as uh, as much as possible in common. Yeah, uh, because it is uh, for sure a, a key, uh, a key of smoothing the activity and to to avoid the the big mistake linked with uh, the position of the stock in the in the global network. I can imagine so. Um, um, Sydney, you mentioned uh, with with the integration of Canada, you are into a phase of implementing a new ERP uh, system. But next to that, I can imagine there are more needs for systems for the near future. Yes, it's true, <clears throat> but uh, our strategy has been uh, um, in the past years uh, to change uh, first the vertical solution uh, and then uh, to think uh, to the IRP. So um, let me say that the most uh, specific, the, the, the most uh, um, particular processes, the most, uh, uh, how can I say, uh, vertical processes uh, are already supported by specific solutions. For example, the supply chain is one of these, uh, but also the CRM or the PLM. So 
uh, we have uh, already five or six vertical solution in place uh, and we are working in order to change uh, the, the IRP uh, below them. Uh, so it will be a challenge of uh, integration, uh, it will be a challenge of uh, uh, swap uh, for, or, or uh, how, how can I say, to, to change the interfaces from the last one to the new one, keeping the operation going on without the disruptions. Okay, uh, that's clear. Um, we're getting nearer to the end of uh, the hour. Uh, it's an interesting, uh, interesting discussion so far. So um, next to the slide, we have only uh, the questions uh, uh, slide. So uh, in the audience, you know, if you are having some questions, uh, start asking them now. Um, we created this slide uh, um, in the last year with some supply chain uh, executive to give an overview of what is the end-to-end -end supply chain visibility. So from left to right, you see your raw materials. To the right, you see the end usage by consumers, maybe patients or B2B customers. Um, on the left side, you see the upstream focus where you're, you're looking at suppliers, uh, you're you know, uh, supplying uh, the uh, the materials and the raw materials and the, the parts, I would say, and you will see the problem of, uh, you know, uh, upstream visibility. Of course, you know, you know, you direct tier one supplier, and sometimes you know your tier two supplier, but most of the companies don't know their tier three suppliers. So upstream, you see supplier risk and compliance as a focus, total landed cost, uh, especially from the Far East, inbound materials and products. Where are they, and can are they arriving on time? In the middle, you see the internal visibility, I would say. You see a whole stack of applications, your, your system of records, your uh, ERP system is, is uh, you know, the, the, the backbone, I would say. And on top of that, you have uh, your TMS, WMS, um, uh, APS, and, in, and then you have your ER, inventory management uh, systems and SOP. And the higher you get, you, you get more strategic, more uh, a long-term horizon uh, network design you see okay where should i have my factories my warehouses uh, etc so this is the stack of it i would say and on the right side you had your downstream focus uh, your channels uh, if you are a manufacturer you have your distributor your wholesale a retailer or if you are a retailer uh, the whole uh, green side is part of your business uh, and downstream you talk about customer profitability and delivery status so this is the whole field of end-to-end supply chain visibility. So it's on an operational level, where are my trucks? Where are my pallets? In the middle level, you have the, the, the capacity planning uh, area. And on a strategic level, talk about, well, the financial uh, viability of your suppliers and your commercial channel. And in the same token, you have to talk about short horizon and long horizon. Um, Sebastian, so when you look at this, Field. This is a whole spectrum of end-to-end -end supply and visibility. So, what are your covering? So, uh, our objective. I, I saw that, for example, the, the TMS is a little box in the in the middle. Also, for the supplier, the, the supplier relationship management is uh, it's also the the objective that we have uh, is uh, to have a, a a solution which will bring you a, a, a full view about all of this end-to-end -end supply chain visibility. So using the, the supply chain management and the, the transport management as a, a, a connector point between all uh, all of these tire and uh, all the, the, the delivery chain, okay? So this is the objective that we have in Tesi Square is to be able to bring to a customer this end-to-end this end -end supply chain visibility, uh, getting all the information about the supply chain management, order management, and the transformation management, uh, giving to our customers the possibility to change the supply chain at the last moment, based on the uh, on the uh, on the situation. So, uh, for example, is what we did in uh, in Ayer with uh, with Sydney uh, is to uh, to give to our customers the possibility to have the full view and to be able to act at the last moment on uh, what to do with the transport, on what to do with the goods, and assign the goods to the good uh, distributor or uh, or point in the supply chain. So this is what we are focused on. And to be to bring this not only the visibility but also the, the possibility to act during the supply chain and to uh, to be more active and more efficient. And this means also uh, be able to change quickly about supplier or, or carrier because of the availability and capacity of each actors 
uh, one of the objective also is to be able through this end-to-end uh, uh, -end visibility and management to be able to to act and to react on the on the different events um we're almost out of time we have one minute before the hour so um we, we answered already some questions for the audience and i uh, asked them uh, you know uh, for you um so if there might be more questions uh, you know uh, feel free to uh, send me uh, a mail or i will send them uh, over to uh, uh Auchan or higher or tasty square so i want to like to, to wrap up uh, finally we, there's no some more uh, information uh, to the left, you see uh, uh, a link to a, a self-assessment of end-to-end -end supply chain uh, uh, planning and visibility. So this is something we have done uh, together with some uh, major companies like uh, Henkel, Unilever, uh, Johnson & Johnson, HPE. We created a self-assessment, an easy Excel with 90 questions where you can assess where you have your end-to-end -end supply chain visibility. Tasty Square uh, has also presented at our Innovate Supply Chain event October uh, 13. You can see a recording of this uh, presentation of the whole portfolio of Tasty Square. And to the right side, you see uh, a checklist uh, also created by Tasty Square, uh, uh, you know, how to get uh, a, a, a better grip on your value chain risks. So you can download this. Uh, as mentioned, this uh, webinar has been recorded. You will get the, 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 the slides as PDF later on this week. And uh, you know, uh, to wrap it up, um, these are the contact details of Tasty Square. So you will uh, get in contact uh, uh, to them. Uh, with this, I would like to thank you for this interactive session. You know, I would like to thank you, Frank. Thank you for your uh, uh, contribution to this uh, discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Sebastian, thank you for uh, hosting and making this possible with your customers. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you a lot to, uh, to Frank and Sine for, for the participation. And Sydney, uh, last but not least, uh, thank you for uh, uh, joining us and uh, giving your expertise to the audience. Thank, thank you to you. Thank you. Um, all the listeners, thank you for joining us. Uh, there were a lot of you uh, among you, and uh, I hope uh, uh, that you enjoyed this uh, interactive uh, version. And uh, maybe you have seen a lot of webinars in the last month, and uh, uh, maybe you're getting uh, uh, well a bit fatigued. But uh, you are a large number today, and in the future, I expect to have more webinars still. And hopefully they will be uh, as interactive uh, as we had in this hour. So thanks again. Um, you will get a link of this recording later on uh, within two days. And uh, I hope to hear you soon in another uh, uh, webinar. Thank you, Frank, Sebastian, and Sydney. And I hope to hear you next time, possibly live in real life. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye.